Buenos dias, Gunners Profiles. Back at it, you already know. Gonna make the heat go boom, 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 boom. What it is, like a motherfucking smack at it, right? The remix, ordinate and menudo style in direct fashion, as you can tell by that thumbnail right there. We're gonna get straight into it, indubitably, right? We're gonna make it happen today right here on Gunners Profiles. It's been a couple days since I've been up in it. I guess my name was Bennett, right? I've been very busy, very preoccupied with a lot of things going on, man. It's been crazy this last week. Sasuke, not crazy, right? It's been loco. Loco in the motherfucking mocha, right? But trip out. As you can tell by that thumbnail right there, there was somebody, a day oneer, that asked me a while back. He said, hey, gun, fuck with me, boy. Fuck with me, right? Um, I have a question. Can you tell us about some of the craziest things you've seen while in prison? I said, what do you mean craziest thing? I done told you several war stories, right? He said, no, some of the funniest things, like, you know, goofy stuff. Well, I'm here to tell you, my brother, man, uh, for the most part, a lot of funny shit don't happen. It's not a laughing matter. It's not a funny place. But every once in a while, you do run into some shit that'll make you wonder. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes you wonder how you keep from going under, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's just weird, but... um. Let me tell you a few stories in prison. Now, some of these are going to focus on California prison. Some of them are going to focus when I did time out of state. It was different. I will tell you that out of state is very different. Um, now, I'm going to tell you about one time that I was in a shoe program out of state. And uh, we were functioning on the shoe. Now, the shoe was very different from the California shoe. And the California shoe, um, it's very quiet. You can hear a pin drop. Motherfuckers ain't saying nothing. This is all you hear. <sighs> Motherfuckers getting their push-ups on and their burpees. Oh my, right? Burpees are definitely happening. Um, people are functioning at the highest levels. Okay, you got some of the state's most dangerous and deadliest, what they consider allegedly, inmates or convicts doing time in the shoe. Um, so that's just the way it is, man. And hey, that's just the way it's always going to be, right? Motherfuckers are functioning at the highest degree. But in other states, it's very different. It's a little bit more boisterous, a little bit more loud, a little bit more wolfing going on. I myself didn't participate in these antics because coming from California, I was like, Charlie Holmes, I don't get down like that. Um, but I'm going to listen. I'm going to keep my fucking length is wax and I'm going to keep my fucking ears open. I'm going to wax on, wax off. And I'm going to hear what's going on around me and survey the situation and keep my head on swivelization because that's what you do when you're in the penitentiary. Um, you want to pay attention to what's going on. You know what I mean? So that's good. You, you want to know. I thought you need to know. Um, so this particular day, there was a cell next door to me that was empty. And I remember they brought in this Africano brother. He was a sangre man from out of state. He came from out of state hood. So he, had, he wasn't with the California flavor. He had a whole different flavor, right? Um, but ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Like I said, there's hitters from every state. This definitely wasn't one of them. So they brought him in the door, and I remember seeing him. And I recognized him from the yard. I was like, damn, what'd this fucker do to get caught up, man? Because usually you're doing nothing less than a year. Once you get placed in this place, it's a year flat right off the top. Some people are doing two, three, four so on and so forth. If you're a validated game member, just like in California, you will be doing the duration, right? At this time, I was doing a three-year bid in the shoe. Um, this guy comes walking in, so I see him. He's my next door neighbor, so immediately I pound on the wall. It was so, brother, you need anything? That's just common courtesy. You look out for your vecino, right? Being your neighbor. Hey, brother, you need anything? I got a few magazines. I got a little sopita here. Boom, a little jabon. Let me slide that to you. Because he had no people on that tira. We were on the top tier, and the sang there was one other sangre, and he was downstairs. Sangre meaning bloods on paru. There was only one, and he was downstairs. So I felt that for no other reason I should fucking, you know, bless this guy with the little care package. That's just a neighborly thing to do. That's how prison etiquette works. That's how you get down, right? Um. So I was like, hey, bro, you need anything? He was like, I ain't got shit. Boom, I blessed him with a soap, a soup, a little bit of toothpaste, brush your shit, right? And a little bit of shampoo, right? Get the BDBs up off your shit, right? I'm going to bless you. So I blessed him. So he starts hollering down to his homeboy. Now, one thing about this place is there's rules and regulations for every tier, man. Dispense on la tira. Shut the fuck up if it's too early, right? Don't go waking people up and don't be fucking up routines, right? But this guy didn't know that. He was still new to the game. He was still a fish to this particular tier. So he's going to do and say it with his chest, whatever he had to say, right? So he's screaming down to his homeboy who was way in the corner. Well, all of a sudden you hear a soft voice. A soft-spoken voice says, hey, man, can you keep it quiet up there? I'm trying to sleep, right? Now, this is totally different from California where mattresses rolled at five and motherfuckers are getting it, right? People will sleep all day because they have nothing better to do in their life, right? So, of course, this song says, hey, man, check this out. I'm trying to holler at my homeboy, man. Fuck what you're talking about, right? 
So the dude's like, okay, look, I'm asking respectfully. Can you please keep it quiet? Because I'm scared, you know what I mean? I'm trying to do me. And he was like, look, I ain't trying to hear none of that bullshit. Fuck you and what you got going on down there. This is me and my homeboy. You know what I mean? This is the A and B conversation. See your way out of it, blood, right? So this guy's feeling some type of way. There's a little bit of an exchange back and forth. But the guy on the bottom who I know at this particular time is not the one to be fooled with, right? So what this Africano brother didn't know, and you know, I'm not going to get in this mix. I'm not going to bang on the wall and tell him, hey, you might want to shut the fuck up. I'm not going to do any of that because at this particular time, I'm kind of laughing in the back of my cell like this guy doesn't know the type of mix he's involved in. Now, at this particular place, they did put you on a group yard, okay? So the others and the Africanos would be on a yard. The Norteños had their own yard. Southsiders had their own yard with the whites, right? That's just how they did it. They segregated everybody, but you did have somewhat of a group yard. If there was people from your particular group in that pot, right? Um, it was like a fucking uh, eight cells on top, eight cells on the bottom. So it was what it was, right? You do the math. So anyways, he keeps hollering at his homeboy. Every time this other guy downstairs tries to speak, he keeps yelling over him. What he didn't understand, what I did, and now you guys are about to, is that this guy downstairs that was hollering at this guy was 360 pounds of pure Samoan. He was a Uso. What's up, Sole? Right? He was the real deal, Holyfield. The type of individual homes that didn't take one fucking pair of handcuffs to, uh, to cuff him. It took seven, right? That's how big this guy was. Probably one of the biggest Samoan brothers I've ever seen in my life. This guy's not knowing that. So the Samoan guy hollers up to him. He said, look, bro, I'm going to give you one more chance. We're going to keep it cool. Um, I'm going to come out to showers later. When I come out to shower, um, I'm going to go ahead and let you see who I am, bro, so you can see me face to face. If you still want that smoke, when we go to the yarda, quietly as it's kept, we'll handle our business, right? So old boy's whooping that high power shit, man. I don't give a fuck, blood. I'm whoop de whoop pa We can get it and this, this, and that. Oh, boy's like, okay, say it with your chest, right? He says it real soft-spoken. Anyone that's ever did time with Samoans, others, man, anyone knows the Islanders are not the ones to be fucked with. They'll fuck around and pop your eye out. That's it. They ain't playing, right? But at the same time, they're not going to woof and yell and scream and none of that, homes. They're going to show you by force. So anyways, it's about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and they're, do, they're conducting showers on the bottom tier. And they would switch. Bottom tier would do showers. Next day, we'd do showers. It was on and off. And so they're conducting bottom showers. And the placas, it would take two placas, they cuff you up, walk you to the shower, uncuff you, you shower, and then from there you go back to your cell. Next day would be yard. So it was every other day, it was a switch off. So anyways, they come to his cell. Everyone's quiet because everybody knows he's about to come out. They're trying to see what's going to happen. And as he, as the fucking placas get to his door, this is the funny part, right? The placas like, yeah, um, and this black dude is woofing. This African is still woofing. He's like, yeah, motherfucker, you know what I mean? I don't give a fuck what you look like when you come out. You know what I mean? We can get it. Woo, woo, woo. I'll see you on yard tomorrow and this, this, and that, and all kinds of high power shit. Craziness, right? So next thing you know, the black is like, oh yeah, this is whoop de whoop. We're gonna need three pairs of cuffs. It gets quiet. Oh yes, it got very quiet, right? I could hear the brother next door start breathing hard. He's like, did they say three three pairs of cuffs? <laughs> oh paru, that's what they said, right? Do you hit this motherfucker with three pairs of cuffs? Barely, barely gonna work, right? He comes out of cell, the biggest individual this motherfucker that I've ever seen, and I swear to you, gente, palabra, this motherfucker changed like a motherfucker, the next door neighbor. He was like, oh shit, I ain't seen you. I remember your ass on the yard. Brother, I didn't know that was you. Man, my bad, bro. My bad, I ain't trying to. Nah, hell no. Nah. <laughs> he didn't want no part of that, right? The Samoa just looked at him. He was like, what's up, right? And I was like, I could have told you that one. <laughs> that fool wanted no smoke. That goes to show you, man, you can't just go woofing on people. You don't know, man, who the fuck you're fucking with, right? This guy was fucking with the wrong one, right? He knew that at that point in time, you know you done fucked up, right? Hey, blood, you know you done fucked up, right? So later on, I got to conversate with him. Everything was worked out just fine. He didn't get his fucking eyes popped out of his head. Barely, right? But it almost happened. Um, that was one of the funnier situations I was involved in. Not really involved, but seen it. Um, another one was, um, same state, man, I'm locked up. And I know the thumbnail says California prisons, but man, more shit happens out of state than California. California's on a setio tip, man. You'll barely see anything, but I've seen a couple things, but you'll barely see too much shit going on there. That's just the way it is, right? Um, so we're out of state, man. I'm in the oil. I'm in the oil. I got caught up for a fight. Um, I remember that, that actual fight, man, was, uh, there was a homeboy and he was playing basketball with the Africano brothers, man. And one of the Africano brothers fouled him. 
And uh, they decided that for no other reason, man, to get a little head up fade in the cuts and the blinas, right? The blinds. It was a blind area where the blackers couldn't really see, right, from the tower. Um, so they're getting it. And there was another Africano who was on a phone. They had phones outside. They had like a phone bank. And this dude was like an asshole, Holmes. He was like a revolutionary type motherfucker that hated every other person but a black person, right? And I didn't understand because we were cool with the Africanos being the Norteños, you know what I mean? They were cool. We didn't back each other's play in this state, none of that. Uh, but we had a, we had a, you know, basically we chopped it up. We were cool. There was no problems. And this fool, I was right there telling, and my homeboy was getting smashed on. I'm going to keep it up, totally real. Motherfucker was getting beat up from the feet up, right? He was getting his toenails clipped. It was all bad, right? So I'm feeling some type of way, fuck, just stab him, right? I'm getting all hyphy. I'm getting mad because, I mean, the homeboy's getting fucking fucked up in front of me, right? But it's a one-on-one. -on -one. You got to let it be a one-on-one. -on -one. But I'm still feeling some type of particular way, right? And this Africano is like, yeah, beat that motherfucking Mexican's ass. Beat his ass, man. Beat his ass. So I said, hold on now. Hold on. Hold on. What you mean? Mexican, right? You know, that's, that's prejudice. Walk the ride. I'm feeling some type of way myself. And he keeps on saying it. And he tells his old lady, yeah, my homeboys is over here beating all these Mexicans' asses. <laughs> Boop. Beep, 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 beep. I'm on him. Phone. Oh, you don't know that you want, right? His old lady's like, no. I'm like, yes, bitch. Yes. Right? Boom, boom, boom. I'm handling my business. I'm cracking phones over his head. Blackers come running out. They see us fighting. They see everybody fighting. The yard goes down. We're incarcerated. We're going to the oil. So anyways, I'm sitting in the hole. And as I'm sitting on the top tier of the hole, cell 216, man, um, I'm just trying to function and do, like I said, I do my program differently, man. I don't wolf. I don't bump bacon sort of breath out the door. Homes. That's never been my agenda. Um, I just try to keep to myself, read my libros, eat my fucking comida, work out, do me. You know what I mean? In a Norteño fashion. I was functioning. I'm out of state, but I was functioning, right? Um, so I'm doing my own strive. And uh, there was this black guy, this Haina. She came on the tier. Now, on this particular tier, there was a lot of white guys on this tier um, that were some buddies from different gangs. You know, it's an out-of-state thing. They had their different types of gangs. Um, so one of them says, hey, there's shit face. Had that shit taste, right? And she looks back. She recognizes this individual, and she kind of looks at him. Now, this black guy... She had been known to hold mail. She was kind of, you know, she, she fucked with us. She, she wasn't a cool one. She was one of those ones, ah, oh, shit, this bitch is working, right? Um, you knew not to really mess around on the tier fish too much because she's going to come try, try to run, grab your line. One of those blackers that just took the initiative to be a bitch, man, to just mess with people, right? Um, so anyways, everyone starts hollering on the tier every time she comes on. Hey, there's shit face. Had that shit taste, right? Now, the particular fucking story, the background story to this was when she was in a different place, I guess, years ago, somebody had shit bombed her. For some, for those of you that don't know what shit bomb is, they take their feces, their urine, whatever, they make a concoction, they mix it. When they open the tray slot, they threw it in her mouth, she had shit in her mouth, she spit it all out. <laughs> you know what I mean? We call her shitty face, right? I mean, that's what that was. Um, and she got shit bombed pretty bad, I guess, at this place, and this is why they moved her. So this guy recognized her from there, told everybody on the tier the story. And so every time she came on, it would be, hey, there's shit face, how that shit taste, right? Um, and she wasn't feeling it. So one day she comes up to one of the shot caller white guys or whoever. He thought he was a Yavetta, right? Or and people did. Um, she comes up to a cell. She's like, hey, what's it going to take to get you to stop saying this, you know? Because she's feeling some type of way. Now you went and seen her character from chest out, saying it with her chest all pumped up to now she's like shoulder slump. She's just feeling bad because she's getting clowned on and she knows it's the truth, right? Um, and she knows that that shit tasted, I mean, that was a shitty situation, right? Um, so she comes up to his door and he's like, turn around and bend over that rail so I can get mine. You know what I mean? Every time you come up on that tier, girl, you need to bend up over that rail, right? So at first she's like, what? And he's like, yeah, you heard me, right? You're going to do it like that or every time you're going to get it, right? So I swear to you, palabra, this kind of I'm... Two cells down, I'm looking like, so scared. I'm, I'm trying to see some ass cheeks, right? Arby's, right? Menudo style. This chick done bent over the rail like she's talking to the cop in the tower. She's wiggling her shit. He's like, more, more, right? She's damn near hanging over the rail, right? Showing him everything, right? I ain't gonna lie. Motherfucker, everyone on the theater is on maniaco status, whist whistling and damn, right? This bitch done did that. That's how serious she was. I swear to God, this about the, I don't know if he got it. I can't call it. He was in the cell. I don't know if he got his issue or whatever. But as soon as he was done, he was like, that's what I'm talking about, girl. That's righteous. She's like, right, is that enough? He goes, yeah, shit face. <laughs> and she's walking down the chair. Hey, there, shit face. How the meckles taste, right? And that was that was one of, a funny situation because, I mean, the, not the, demor, the demoralizing woman. Okay, that's not never fun. That's never good. 
Um, but the way she treated people and the way she acted and to humble her, you know, in any way that we could as inmates, as prisoners, as convicts, um, it was a victory in our book, right? Now, another situation I seen, right? Which was a fucking hilarious situation was, uh, and it was the, it was on me, right? Two of them. I got two more situations. Um, my cellie, I got a cellie, man. I get to, uh, I get to, uh, Susanville or was this? No, no, it was Corcoran. And I'm on an ad seg overflow. Okay, I'm on an ad seg overflow. And so when you get there from R&R, &R, they put you in ad seg overflow, meaning the oil, but you're not, you don't got whole time to do, but you're waiting for a fucking bunk or a cell to open up so you can go to your cell, right? Places are so filled up, you got to wait for people to parole so you can get in there. That's just how bad it is, right? It's crazy. So anyways, I'm posted up like, okay, what the fuck is going on here? And they put this celly in with me, man. The bought from Los Baños, right? And I knew right when they put him in there with me, man, it was hard times. I said, hey, what you in for? Hard times, right? It was going to be hard times because this Vato was like a space cadet. He was a J-cat, a true, I know, you got to think I'm a J-cat. Shit, you ain't seen shit yet. This motherfucker came in. This was the Disculpa Man guy, right? Everything this guy did, this motherfucker worked out from four in the morning to nine o'clock at night. Disculpa Man, Disculpa Man, sweat pouring everywhere. Bird bathing was real. I mean, it was a disaster in there. And I used to tell him, hey, bro, fuck, you smell like fucking, like straight caca, fool, right? Because we didn't have no deodorants. It was fucked up. I used to sit there looking right outside. Our bolsitas of all our property were right in front of our fucking cells. Deodorants right there. Blackers ain't giving shit. Finally, I told the guard, guard, right? He said, what? I said, disculpa, man, right? Fuck him. Take a, take a whiff. He was like, what? I said, smell this shit. The, right? Um, he's like, good. Loud. Motherfucking Rojo's voice, right? This shit smell. I said, man, fuck with me, man. Give me a little piece of deodorant or something. Help this Vato out. The Vato's in the back. Disculpa, man. Disculpa. I said, please, Lord. Right? Help me. Fuck. That's it, right? Of course, they shot a little piece of deodorant, man. I told him, here. That motherfucker put the deodorant to his fucking underarms, and it sank in. <laughs> Just melted because they only gave us a little piece. They're not going to give us the full deodorant because that's if I had that little course going, I might have had to use it. But it was that serious, right? By the time they're about to hit it with one, I didn't even get to use it. He hit it with one use, it was gone. It disintegrated into his shit, right? It melted, but it saved the day, you know? But I'll never forget, man, that was a fucked up situation for me because I was in that motherfucker like, right? Um, bad situations happen in prison, man, when you least expect them. I couldn't wait to get out of there. The moment they were like, hey, Release yourself. Get, get, get me the fuck up out of here. Can I get my property? I'm out, right? The vato was like, the scoop on me, the scoop on me. Wait, no, fuck you, bitch, right? The scoop on yourself. Fuck you, right? I'm um, seeing him on the yard. I ended up getting whacked later on. Just happens, right? Over some different shit. But I ain't gonna lie, man. If I sit here and say I wasn't fucking uh, pretty happy about it. Now, um, the last incident that happened was actually in a county jail. Okay, so I'm in a county jail out of state and I'm posted up, right? Um, and I'm waiting. I'm waiting, you know what I mean? Because my celly just paroled. He just got up out of there. Not, not paroled, but got out. You know, he got out of jail. And so I ain't got a celly for... So when you ain't got a celly for a couple of days, it's cool, man. You got your own cell. You could you know, so you could cry. You could laugh. I think you could think about Scarface, the movie. Dun, 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 and do whatever you're doing, right? Just do you. But the door opens and there's a whole bunch of new fish coming in. And this black bottle walks in. Now, where I'm at, homes, they don't give a fuck. They'll sell you up with anyone. This Africano brother walks in. This is the biggest... Uh, now, I just told you the story about the, the Samoa. That was a big boy, right? Now, this Vata was on. Well, this Vata was like the Green Mile mixed with Debo, mixed with Damon. You know what I mean? This Vata walked in, and I just knew. I said, these motherfuckers, I got no luck in the world, right? They going to put this motherfucker in my cell. Sure enough, he stands in front of my cell. I mean, just the craziest, biggest, monstrous motherfucker i ever seen in my life. I said, oh, God, I don't know what I ever did to you, right? But I guess karma's a motherfucker, right? Help me, God! Right. So I'm thinking to myself: as soon as they open the crack the door, man, I'm just gonna flight him, man, to get up out of here. And not because he did anything in particular to me, because I don't want him to do anything in particular to me. You know, you gotta understand, man. I was like a buck thirty, buck forty at this time. This motherfucker was a good three twenty, right? On wall, right? They crack the doors, and I just, I'm in the back of the cell, ready to take fucking flight, right? I'm like Howard the Duck, I'm, I'm small to this bottle. I'm ready to jump up and boom, gazoo his ass, right? And he coming in the cell on some Debo shit, right? And then about to drops his little brown bag that he had. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, Damon. I am a boy, right? I was about to say, motherfucker, fuck this, right? 
And this motherfucker says, hey, bro, I don't want no problems, bro. This is your cell. He had the whitest voice I ever heard. This about was like, hey, man, check it out. I don't want not one problem. I'm just here doing 10 days because I got caught with cocaine. And I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to do my time. I've never been in jail. I've never been in prison, man. And I was like, damn, bro, what the fuck? Come to find out he was one of the coolest cellies I ever had. And I was scared to death. I'm going to keep it real, right? Motherfucking Vato's out there like, hey, man, you should have just hit him with the filero. And I'm man, stop it. You weren't put in that situation. That Vato would have took the filero and did it. Watch out. Bing. And threw that motherfucker. He was that big, right? Okay, I didn't want that smoke. Um, he was end up being the coolest cellie. I remember I used to have to help him put his shirt on. He used to be like, I can't get in this motherfucker. They wanted to give him a 3X. His Vato was like 320, all muscles bulging out of his earlobes, right? So I'm trying to help him and shit put it on. I was crazy, right? Um, but those are some of the craziest situations I've ever seen, man. I know if you're expecting uh, 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 Jotito shit and all that, this ain't the channel for that, man. I never seen that. Um, and if I did, Holmes, it, it wasn't none of my business. And so I was like, what the fuck are they doing over there? You know, man moans? Those are man moans, right? I'm cool. Anyways, that's how it goes down in the California prison, out of state prison, man. Motherfucker shit be crazy, right? I'll see some crazy other shit, man. We're going to talk about that later on. But those are some of the funny incidences that I was involved. Anyways, I hope that you move forward with a purpose. I hope that you enjoy the stories. I hope that you get everything that you want coming to you. Remember, at the end of the day, it's all about coming together as a people, man, uniting the raza. Let's make it happen, Captain Crunch, right? Let's do what we do in a menudo style in a direct fashion because only we can do it. Go out there and get it, man, for your head there. If you like this, please hit that like and subscribe one time. We're almost to 50K on Gunners Collective. Get it, baby, we can do it. Take the time, do it right. We making it happen over there. Man, I appreciate it. If you like this, please hit that thumbs up. If you don't, you can hit that thumbs down. Here is the head that wears the crown. I'm going to continue to strive and struggle for what I truly believe in, and that's the betterment of all people. This is the gun. Raiders! Bang, bang. There's cowboy fans right now like, unsub. <laughs>